The Jack Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. LSMFT, LSMFT. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine tobacco that gives you a truly finer smoke. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Year after year, at auction after auction, independent tobacco experts can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select and buy that fine, that light, that naturally mild tobacco. Just listen to what Mr. B.V. Bowen, 40 years an independent tobacco buyer of Timmonsville, South Carolina, recently said. I make my living buying tobacco, and year after year, I've seen American buy fine, light, full-bodied tobacco. Ripe, mellow tobacco that makes a smooth, mild smoke. For 22 years now, I'll smoke Lucky's regularly. Take a tip from the experts. For your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, light up a Lucky. Light up a really finer cigarette. And puff by puff, you'll see. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Remember, there's no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. Six The Lucky Strike program, starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may know, this is National Pickle Week. We'd like to honor the occasion, but since we can't bring you a pickle, we bring you a man who's a barrel of fun, Jack Benny! Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Hello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, you certainly went a long way for that introduction, didn't you? Oh, no, I didn't, Jack. This really is National Pickle Week. Well, dilly, dilly. <laughs> Jack, a pickle's nothing to laugh at. Our first joke proved your point. <laughs> but as long as it is National Pickle Week, I want to say congratulations to all the mama pickles, papa pickles, and all the little boys and gherkins. <laughs> now, Don, let's get on with the... Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. I'm glad you got over your cold. We missed you last week. Well, thanks. Uh, what are you and Don talking about? What are we talking about? You mean you haven't heard? Heard what? All over the country, flags are flying, parades are forming, and you don't know? Know what? Mary, this is National Pickle Week. <laughs> Pickle? Yeah, that's a cucumber that had its option picked up by Heinz. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, Don's right. I am a barrel of fun. You know. <laughs> For this, I had to get well. Well, you can thank me, Mary, for sending my doctor over to take care of you. Oh, fine. Some doctor. What are you talking about? He's an excellent physician. Yeah, but boy, is he nearsighted. Huh? As he came into the house, I thought I'd save a little time. So when he walked over to me, I stuck out my tongue and he hung his hat on it. <laughs> hung his hat on your tongue? Then he walked over to the clothes rack and said... Don't stand there in the corner with three coats on. If you're cold, get in bed. <laughs> Gee, I didn't know he was that nearsighted. <laughs> he can't hear either. The doctor can't hear? <laughs> I said goodbye to him four days ago, and he's still there. <laughs> oh, well, anyway, Mary, you're back on the program. That's all that matters, because tonight we're going to do a very important sketch. That... Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I drove you down to the studio of my cab, didn't I? Yes, yes, you did. The fare was $1.95, and I paid you. Well, I've been thinking about the tip. The tip? What about it? Look, I know this is National Pickle Week, but I'd rather have money. <laughs> You'll keep what I gave you. Goodbye. <laughs> He's got a lot of nerve breaking in on my program with those silly... Wait a minute, Jackson. Don't get mad at the cab driver. He deserves a lot of credit. The guy comes in here without a script and gets a laugh. So what? Well, that's the way we'll all have to do on television. No scripts, no nothing. We'll have to ad-lib our way. Well, I won't have any trouble. I'm a barrel of fun. <laughs> I don't care if you're a barrel of bourbon. Sit down and oh, learn Oh, yes, something. you do. <laughs> I'll 
Not unless you're 100 proof. <laughs> now, look, I'll show you how television's gonna be, Jackson. Hey, Livy, ask me. Ask me what I did yesterday. Okay, Phil. What'd you do yesterday? I played golf. You see, it's easy. <laughs> well, Phil, what's funny about that? Don't rush me. Now, come on, Liv. Ask me what happened on the first tee. Okay, what happened on the first tee? <laughs> I drove off and hit Walter Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, look, Phil, what's funny about hitting Walter Pigeon? Well, don't you get it? On my first shot, I got a birdie. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, Phil, you're going to do a corny routine like that on television? Well, that's the idea, Jackson. Milton Berle will steal it, get thrown off a of television, and then there's a chance for us. <laughs> well, I hope he steals our first three pages. It'll give him a running start. <laughs> Wait a minute, Jack. I think Milton is very clever. Oh, he is, eh? Livy's right, Jackson. Milton is a burl of fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Harris, you're like a car without brakes. There ain't no stopping you. <laughs> uh, don't worry, folks. He'll be normal in a couple of days. Yoakum's moon will soon be over. <laughs> now, look, kids. I started to tell you that we have a very important sketch to do tonight. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. <coughs> oh, hello, Dennis. What's that you're eating? A pickle. A pickle? Yeah, cab driver gave it to me in change. <laughs> oh, well, how, how come you took a cab from home? Oh, I didn't come from home. I came from the airport. Well, Dennis, have you been away? Oh, no. A friend of mine is learning to fly, and when he got through with his lesson, I put on a parachute, and he took me for a ride. <laughs> Dennis, your friend is just learning to fly, and you went for a ride with him? Uh-huh. Weren't you afraid? Afraid of what? We were riding in his car. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. Look, kid, if you were riding in a car, why did you wear a parachute? In case he went up on a grease rack. <laughs> well, I asked a question, he gave me an answer. And it wasn't bad for this late in the season. <laughs> Imagine going up on a grease rack. You know, Dennis, you're silly, but you're cute. Yeah, you dames are all alike. <laughs> what? You go nuts about men who live dangerously. <laughs> Dennis. Kiss me, Liv. Well, of all the... That kid gets sillier every program. By the time we go off the air... Mary! 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 <laughs> Mary, why'd you do that to Dennis? Well, he asked for a kiss, so I gave it to him. And it wasn't bad for this late in the season. <laughs> All right. Now, look, Dennis, we got a very important sketch to do tonight, so sing your song now. I'm a nervous wreck, but I'll try. Okay. There's a chapter in my life called Mary. It's the story of Mary and me. Tells with a tear in each souvenir just how sweet a love can be. In the chapter in my life called Mary are the moments that we used to share. I live to recall. Treasure them all, every tender memory there. Songs that we remembered, picnics by the shore, making Mary smile or sigh. Walks across the meadow, good nights at her door, till that kiss. Of goodbye. It's the chapter in my life called Mary, and there's heartache in each little line. It's not in a book where people may look, it's in Mary's heart.
was a chapter in my life of Dennis Day called Mary, sung by Dennis Day. And very good, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight for our feature attraction, we're going to do our own original story based on those two great fight pictures, The Champion and The Setup. In this thrilling story of the squared circle, I'm going to play the part of... Uh-oh. What's the matter, Jack? The scripts. Mary, would you go to my dressing room and see if Rochester got the scripts for the play? Okay, I'll be right back. Oh, hello, Miss Livingston. Hello, Rochester. Mr. Benny wants to know if the scripts are ready. Yes, here they are. I was just reading them. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? It says Mr. Benny's going to play the part of a prize fighter. Well, I don't think it's so far-fetched for Mr. Benny to be a prize fighter. After all, he does have a nice physique. Miss Livingston, you see him with his clothes on. I undress him. <laughs> <laughs> so what? It's like eating an artichoke. You keep taking things off till you're down to nothing. <laughs> oh, Rochester, stop making things up. Are you going to listen to the sketch? Oh, no. While the program is on, I have to call people up and find out who their favorite comedian is. Well, I thought Mr. Hooper did that. We have our own system. Would you like to see how it works? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll take some numbers from this telephone book. Uh, I'll start with this one. Hello, this is the Acme Radio Survey. Is your favorite comedian Jack Benny? Oh. <laughs> This is the Acme Radio Survey. Is your favorite comedian Jack Benny? Oh. Uh, Rochester, I better go. Wait, I'll try again. This is the Acme Radio Survey. Is your favorite comedian Jack Benny? <laughs> Mr. Benny is waiting for these scripts. Okay, here you are, Miss Livingston. Now, let's see. I'll pick another number. Mary, Mary, how about the scripts? I've got them. Well, hurry up now. Everyone's waiting. Don, you hand them out, will you? Oh, all right, Jack. Now, kids, when we do this play, I want everybody to try... I'll get it. Hello? The Acme Radio Survey? <laughs> yes. Yes, he is. Yes, I, I listen to them all the time. And now, kids. <laughs> and now, kids, as I was saying... Boss, boss, I found one! I found one! <laughs> good, good. Now, kids, you've all... Mary, stop looking at me. You know, Truman voted for himself, too. You know. <laughs> now, kids, you've all got your scripts, so let's get started with the play. Uh, Jack, what about the sportsman quartet? Aren't they going to do a number? They did that while you were out. Oh, gee whiz. What's the matter? Well, you said it was very clever, and you wanted me to hear it. Well, Mary, we've already done it, but I'll tell you what it was about. You see, next Sunday is our last broadcast of the season, and the quartet is going to spend the summer making personal appearances in Honolulu. Uh-huh. So I asked Don, what kind of songs are they going to do over there? And Don said... The boys are going to do songs like Aloha, Sweet Leilani, and Hawaiian War Chant. Then I said, Don, I don't know how Hawaiian War Chant goes. And then Don said... I'll have the boys do it for you now. So I said, would you, Don? And Don said... Sure, Jack. Take it, fellas! And when Don said... Take it, fellas... The quartet sang... Easy on the draw. Lucky strike. We are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoke, lucky strike. Ah, 
Harper's choice. Uh, hup, uh, hup, uh, always luck is right. A product is essential to continuing success. Luckies are made of the fine, of the light tobacco we confess. Ella, 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 that's the only cigarette that you can sell to me. Ella, 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 we really mean it. Lucky strike, oh Ella, 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 Lucky strike, they never fail to please the fellas. Smoke a lucky and be cooler while you hula hula. How'd you like it, Mary? Not bad for this late in the season. You said it. <laughs> and now for our play. Let's go, Don. Ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we present a thrilling, dramatic story of the prize ring entitled The Champion Setup. Curtain music. <laughs> champion of the world. People say I'm a heel. They say I'd slug my own grandmother. But they're wrong. Grandma's a heavyweight. <laughs> my struggle to the championship was a tough one. It started two years ago. I was trudging along a dusty Kansas road, hitchhiking with my best friend, Bubbles. You tired, Bubbles? Ah, uh, pretty much, Midge. Well, we'll be in Los Angeles in a few days. I hear it's a great place. Hey, Bubbles, look out. Here comes a car. Hey, do you boys want a lift? The car stopped in front of us. It was the latest model driven by a beautiful girl with a convertible top. <laughs> I could tell by the dark part in her blonde hair. <laughs> of the sun hit her golden curls, it glistened. The most beautiful hair I'd ever seen. I promised myself that when I got rich, I was going to buy some like it. <laughs> there was a man sitting next to her. As Bubbles and I started to get into the car, she said, Hop into the back seat, boys. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot. Don't mention us. Gee, this is a beautiful car. What kind is it? A Cadillac. I thought it was a Buick. Look at all those holes in the side. We got those in an argument with the sheriff in El Paso. Oh. How far are you boys going? All the way to Los Angeles. Los Angeles, eh? I got an aunt who lives in a suburb of Los Angeles. Glendale? No, Tehachapi. <laughs> oh. By the way, miss, your boyfriend doesn't seem very talkative. Talks with his fists. He's Slugger Brown, the middleweight champ of the world. Yeah. <laughs> we can only take you boys as far as Omaha. Slugger's fighting there tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Are you really Slugger Brown? Yeah. <laughs> and you're, you're the middleweight champ? Yeah. You're fighting tonight in Omaha? Yeah. And this is the title fight? Yeah. 36 years later, we arrived in Omaha. <laughs> During the ride, I found out a lot about Slugger and his girlfriend, Dill. Her name used to be Mary, but she changed it in honor of National Pickle Week. <laughs> I watched the fight that night and saw Slugger Brown collect 30,000 bucks. It was then I, Midge Benny, decided to become a prize fighter. Bubbles and I hitchhiked to Los Angeles and I went to see the foremost fight manager in town. I stripped myself to the waist. He looked at my chest and said, That reminds me, I'm having spare ribs for dinner. <laughs> now don't be funny, Mr. O'Brien. I may not look so good now, but you give me two or three months of training, I'll be a champion someday. 
Do you hear? A champion. Now, wait a minute, son. Fighting is a tough game. I used to be a fighter myself, and I'll never forget my last bout. It was with Killer Nelson. I tried to slug it out with him for the first three rounds, and then I decided I better stay away from him, so I got on my bicycle. But he finally got me. What happened? My trunks got caught in the chain. <laughs> oh. Then you didn't swim the fight. <laughs> Send three. <laughs> now, look, Mr. O'Brien, I want to be a fighter. Will you handle me? All right, kid. I'll be your manager. Go over to the gym and let my trainer, Punchy McNeil, get you in condition. Bubbles and I went over to the gym. It was a large, gloomy place, smelling a liniment. Here in this edifice of concrete and steel, men dedicated their lives to the inhuman pursuit of mangling and maiming. It was here that the beast and man overrode all human qualities, and one man would try to batter another's countenance beyond recognition for the sake of monetary reward. <laughs> Gee, that new writer I got from Lux is terrific. <laughs> I looked around the gym trying to find Punchy McNeil. Finally, I asked a man leaning against the ring. Excuse me, mister, but I'm looking for Punchy McNeil. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> well, I'm Midge Benny. I'm pleased to know you. <laughs> now, look, Punchy, I'm trying to be a fighter. Mr. O'Brien wants you to handle me. Okay, but you ought to think it over. Fighting is a tough racket. Yeah, I should know because I used to be a fighter myself. No. Yeah, yeah, I had my first fight back in 1932. Gosh. Yeah, I spent 12 years in the ring. 12 years? Yeah, but I finally came to, got up, and went home. Well, look, Punchy, I want to... Hey, wait a minute. I, I didn't finish my story. Oh, there's more? Yeah. What? <laughs> Oh, well, tell me, Punchy, were you always a fighter? Oh, no, I used to be a musician with Guy Lombardo's band. Go on, you were never with Lombardo. Oh, yes, 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 I was. <laughs> You're a little flat on that last... <laughs> uh, come on, Mitch, let's start training. Two weeks later, I won my first fight. A week later, my second, then my third, fourth, fifth, until I had won 28 fights. In two short years, I was matched to fight the champ, Slugger Brown. I was in my dressing room with my manager when the door opened. Hello, Midge. How you doing? It was her again. <laughs> she was wearing a dress that must have been made by the Hudson Automobile Company. The neckline was so low, she had to step down to get into it. <laughs> Hello, baby. How's about a date tonight after I knock out the champ? I've got news for you, Midge. You're not knocking out anybody. You're throwing the fight. Are you kidding? If you don't believe me, here's your manager. Ask him. O'Brien, are you crazy? Would I fight for two years in tank towns for this? Would I spend two years getting my brains knocked out just so I could take a dive? Would I work my way up to the title bow just to throw the fight? Would I? Would I? Why don't you turn the page and find out? <laughs> I turned the page, and there it was. <laughs> I was to take a dive in the fifth round. My new writer from Lux had double-crossed me. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to do it. I'd worked and fought to be champion. And tonight, I was going to fight to win. Introducing at 159 pounds, wearing purple trunks, the middleweight champion of the world, Slugger Abram. <laughs> His worthy opponent, weighing 155 pounds, wearing bifocal glasses, <laughs> Major Benny! Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the radio audience. The men are in the center of the ring, receiving their instructions. They go back to their corners, waiting for the bell. And there it is, round one. Slugger comes out of his corner and starts mixing furiously. Midge meets him like a wildcat with a right and a left. And now for a few words from our sponsor. Look sharp. <laughs> Feel sharp, be sharp. Use a wherever grindstone and sharpen your silly face off. <laughs> now, back to the fight. Well, that was an exciting round. <laughs> Slugger's 
nose is still bleeding and Midge's eye is tightly closed. Now we're waiting for the bell for the second round. There's the bell. The boys come out and circle each other. They're still circling each other. We circled each other three times. Then my opponent leaned over to me and said... Hey, Bud. Bud. <laughs> Who, me? Yeah. Come here a minute. What is it? What round are you going to take a dive in? The fifth. Uh-uh. What? Make it the third. The third? Why? My feet are killing me. <laughs> well, up, slugger. I'm not throwing this fight. I'm in here to win, so start mixing it. Well, okay, it's your nose. Ooh! The champ lands a terrific right cross, and Midge Benny is down. Yes, I was down. The referee is counting over him. Yes, the referee was counting over him. The count is up to five. Yes, the count was up to five. Now Midge is rolling over on his back. Yes, I was rolling over on my back. Why don't you shut up? <laughs> yes, why don't I shut up? As I lay there beaten and dazed, my whole career flashed in front of me. How it started two years ago, when I was trudging along a dusty Kansas road, hitchhiking with my best friend, Bubbles. You tired, Bubbles? Pretty much, Midge. Hey, Bubbles, look out. Here comes a car. Hey, you boys want a lift? Oh, no. We're not going through that again. <laughs> Come on, Bubbles. Let's... Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts, and Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, it takes fine tobacco to make a fine smoke. And in each and every Lucky Strike, in every pack, in every carton, there's fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. Tobacco that makes Lucky Strike a truly finer cigarette. No doubt about it. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Tobacco that gives you all the real, deep-down smoking enjoyment you expect and deserve in your cigarette. No wonder a recent survey reveals that more independent tobacco experts, men who spend their lives buying, selling, and handling tobacco, smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So, next time you're up at the cigarette counter, remember... There is no finer cigarette than Lucky Strike. Yes, for a finer smoke, smoke a finer cigarette. Lucky Strike. Buy a carton today. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be with you again next Sunday night at the same time when we... I'll get it. Hello? Mr. Benny? Speaking. I am the president of the Pasadena Pickle Factory, and I want to thank you for saving me 200 gallons of vinegar. I saved you 200 gallons of vinegar? Yeah, while your program was on, we had our cucumbers next to the radio and they all turned sour. <laughs> well, good, good. No, but it ain't bad for this late in the season. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Be sure to hear Dennis Day in a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.